So this is the introduction to uh, trigonometry. Sounds like a big word. All it is is about setting up ratios and having a lot of decimals. That's it. So by the end of this video, you should be able to approximate uh, the trigono trigonometric function uh, using a decimal and be able to set up the ratios of uh, trig functions. So it all deals with right triangles. It only deals with right triangles um, and that's it. And it's about ratios of sides. So back in the day, they were trying to figure out ratios of sides and how we can use angles to predict um, the ratios of the sides. Well, they created these uh, three uh, trig functions. Functions are just like operations. Multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Now we're just expanding it into now sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, sine, cosine, and tangent are of angles. So um, we always relate this to uh, knowing an angle in one side of a right triangle and not being able to use the Pythagorean theorem. Well, this is the way of doing it. Now we can use an angle and a side to predict what the other sides are going to be. And um, we use sine, cosine, and tangent to do that. Now the sine, cosine, and tangent functions are all based off what angle you're looking at and what's an opposite, adjacent, or the hypotenuse. So the first thing you need to recognize in any of these, you need to have the right angle and you need to draw the arrow. The arrow indicates where the hypotenuse is. Okay, That is never going to change. Some of the other stuff is going to change. So the sine function is defined by the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Okay, So it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, The cosine is defined by the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the tangent function is defined by the opposite over the opposite over the adjacent. And it's opposite of the angle that they're looking at. So in this case, if I'm looking at this and I go, okay, the sine of R, the sine of R, capital R. Capitals are those angles. So R is an angle. So I'm talking about this angle right here. Well, what's opposite of R? Opposite is the one across from it. And the adjacent is here. Okay, I'm going to use O and A. So the sine of R is really the R side over the T side opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine is that adjacent side, the side next to it, over the hypotenuse. So that's S over T. And the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, So that's the R over the S. So these are just letters to you at this point. But the biggest thing with uh, trig is to remember the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. You might learn this as Sokotoa. Sokotoa, Sokotoa. Okay? And it stands for the sine being the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosine being the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Some people write it as so ka toa. Okay, so let's get into some of these. Um, Okay, now I'm giving you a right triangle, um, 5, 12, and 13, 
13 is my hypotenuse. That's not going to change. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the sine of angle A. Sine of angle A, again, A is a capital, so I'm talking about the angle. Well, A is over here. So hypotenuse isn't going to change. I'm going to talk about, oh, the 5 is the opposite, and the 12 is my adjacent. Okay, so the sine of A is really going to be 5 over 13. Well, that is just the ratio of the sines. But it also wants the decimal to the nearest hundredth, hundredth being the second decimal place. So all you got to do is take my calculator, Say, so what's 5 divided by 13? Well, that means the sine of A is 0.38. And it's just the decimal. It's a ratio of those sides. The cosine of A is that adjacent leg. The adjacent, the one next to the angle, that's 12 over 13 over the hypotenuse. That hasn't changed. So then I, to find the decimal, 12 divided by 13. 0.92, and that's the cosine of A. The tangent of A is the opposite over the adjacent. Opposite of angle A is 5 over 12. So the tangent of A, 5 divided by 12, grand total of 0.42. But all things change if I change the angle. So let's say I change the angle. Now I don't want the sine of A. I want the sine of angle B. Okay? So that changes my perspective. Now if I look at B, the 12 is no longer my adjacent side. Now that's my opposite side. And the 5 is not my opposite side. Now that's my adjacent side. So the sine changes. So sine now isn't uh, 5 over 13. Now, the side opposite of B is 12. So that's 12 over 13, which means it is 0.92. The cosine of B is now that adjacent side next to angle B, which is 5 over 13, which is 0.38. And the tangent changes. to 12 over 5, which is 2.4. So it depends on which angle you're looking at. Okay. So the next problems deal with these funny little square roots here. Okay. Now, the biggest thing that you want to do is you just want to convert them to decimals. Now, it, all it says is this is 24 times the square root of 3. So what I would do is I would do 24 times the square root of 3 on my calculator. This side is really 41.57. Okay, This is just the simplified word with no decimals. This one's 36. We're good with that. This one is 12 times the square root of 3, 8.78. So I can use those decimals when I reduce them. Now, let's say you don't have a calculator. Well, you can use your iPhone or uh, Android device. Normally, you just turn it this way, and it'll become a scientific calculator. Or, <clears throat> if you're looking at this, you can just leave it as a fraction. Okay? And that's a valid answer to me. You guys don't need to do the decimals. So, again, if I'm doing the sine of j, I look at the side opposite of j, and it's over the hypotenuse. Cosine of j is the side adjacent to over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of j is the opposite side, that 36, over that adjacent side. 12 squared to 3. 
And I can flip that around and do the sine of L, cosine of L, and tangent of L. And that's how I would do it. I can also reduce down those decimals and get those results. But again, the fractions are fine, or the decimals. The fractions are going to be the easier ones. So the next problems are just setting up the ratios. Okay, For these, you're just uh, doing the fraction with the letters. For these, you're doing the decimals. You're doing the sine, cosine, and tangent of both angles, both F and D. Okay, So I'd do the sine of D, cosine of D, tangent of D, set up those ratios, divide them, and then do the sine of F, cosine of F, tangent of F. For these, you're asked to approximate using four decimals. This is where you're going to need the calculator. So um, there are sine, cosine, and tangent functions in here. And all it says is just type in, what's a sine of 30? So you find the sine button, you use sine 30, hit equals, and you get 0.5. Okay, the cosine of 18, 0.9511. Okay, the tangent of 72, again, I'm just playing into the calculator, is 3.0777. And the sine of 48 is 0.7431. And those are just, I'm just plugging those into the calculator and getting used to doing that and noticing that's big log decimals. 